friends i am dr amdekar and in this video i am going to recapitulate what we have been exposed to in the last 7 videos of the second series we all know that many times a subtle illness which looks very benign could be the harbinger of something coming up serious and in the first episode dr mahesh mohite discussed how to pick up an early seriousness within just half a minute or a minute he emphasized how the first look whether the child looks confused lethargic unduly irritable and then add to that whether the heart rate and the respiratory rate are certainly out of range one could easily suspect that there is something amiss and you don't have to waste much time in getting into all details of history but certainly start an action to save the life first this is very very important and many times especially at the extreme ages in very early infancy and toddler group as well as in senior citizens the illness may not stare at you as serious but it could be as well very life threatening besides many simple viral infection may also complicate over few days and i think it's very important that each one of us must ensure that a given patient when he comes to your office that he is possibly not harboring any serious condition that will evolve over the next a day or two after listening this aspect which means that within 30 to 45 seconds one can suspect seriousness the next step was important and i dealt with that topic and that is patient listening is the first step friends hearing and listening are two different things listening is the interpreted version of what you hear and when you concentrate with eye to eye concentration and very quietly listen to what the patient wants to tell you she is gestures she is body language and you start interpreting what those words mean is really what is patient listening and i did elaborate on few examples how a simple patient listening could diagnose a condition which otherwise would be easily missed and we go around investigating and trying different modes once we know that the patient listening is the first step the next step is a history taking and dr chokani elaborated on history taking as an art as well as science and he said that we should develop the skills of good history taking he emphasized that history taking is a thought in action which means that as you have the communication and question answers with the patient you start even interpreting what it means and the reply that comes from the patient the next question possibly takes you at a further level of interpretation that is thought in action and he also said that history is not just his story his story is what the patient thinks is important but there are many times when you need to make sure whether what patient is saying is exactly what he means many times patient may give some statement which possibly do not exactly mean what they want to convey and in such a case we may have to dig into the history in details and also cross examine so that we confirm that the history that is being given is reasonably reliable and dependable friends this skill is extremely important it is not merely collecting information but much more and dr chokani emphasized on those skills those skills are the minimum that we must inculcate it takes time but that time is worth spending because good 85 to 90% of the time history itself can give you a 
provisional diagnosis on which you can anticipate abnormal physical finding as well as a probable abnormal investigation reports. Having learned how history taking is a skill and it's not only science but also art, in the next episode, Dr. Khare gave simple rules of history taking. And what he said was that we all have learned right in the first clinical term how important it is to analyze with simple rules. When there is a single symptom, you ask for many other probable symptoms which patient may feel they are not important but they often help you to arrive at a diagnosis. But when there are multiple symptoms, we want to know which is the chief complaint of a patient and how do those multiple symptoms come in sequence, how do they appear and how do they further progress. All these are important and of course we learn to analyze origin, duration and progress of each symptom and all that makes us arrive at a reasonable provisional diagnosis. Having learned the basic rules, Dr. Tushar Maniar talked about other aspects of history taking besides these simple rules and that is a side history. There are many things that he emphasized on like the past history, the family history, the drug history, the travel history, personal history and so on and so forth. He explained how each one of those aspects adds to the arrival of a provisional diagnosis. And thereafter, Dr. Tushar Maniar discussed a very important aspect that is going to be more and more relevant in the days to come and that is how to elicit a good genetic history. Friends, genetics is coming in a big way and now we know that genes are responsible for not only our suffering but the way we present, the way we respond to treatment, the way we progress and almost every disease has some genetic background likely to be modifying our presentation and therefore he talked about how to diagnose, how to kind of help the genetic history in terms of management, in terms of prediction, in terms of prevention and genetic history is another important aspect of the history which often many of us may not have learned. It's again a skill of taking a genetic history. When you ask the parents whether there was anybody in the family, answer, answer often is no. But when you dig in further, you do consider anything of that kind. Having heard this kind of the history in different ways, I also discuss one important aspect beyond history taking and that is what is the purpose of history taking. And I emphasize that purpose is not only to arrive at a provisional diagnosis but it has to be a complete diagnosis. And what is complete diagnosis? An anatomical diagnosis, a pathological diagnosis, etiological diagnosis and also the functional diagnosis. Friends, every part of these four components make it a complete diagnosis and you can almost arrive at a complete diagnosis by a good history. But once you recognize the pattern of the symptomatology in terms of all these four components, ultimately today we know that the presentation of every disease is so wide depending on interaction between the host, environment and the trigger itself. Therefore, malaria can present even without fever. Forget the fever with rigors and a tuberculosis can present with high fever. What does it mean? Once you have recognized the pattern and made a textbook classical presentation of a provisional diagnosis, you may have to tie it around with the type of host, the type of environment in which this disease is getting presented and also the type of trigger. For example, the infection could be of a very high virulence, infection could be drug resistant, the patient could have had taken some drugs and therefore the whole syndrome gets modified. 
देर फॉर आई डिस्कस दिस इशो दैट द पर्पज इज टू अराइव एट अ कंप्लीट डायग्नोसिस बट ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू द टाइप ऑफ होस्ट द टाइप ऑफ एनवायरमेंट इन विच द डिसीज इज प्रेजेंटिंग एंड ऑल्सो द टाइप ऑफ ट्रिगर दैट इज कॉजिंग अ डिसीज फ्रेंड्स दिस वॉज द रीकैप ऑफ दिस सीरीज एंड नाउ हैविंग लर्न हाउ टू गो अबाउट गुड हिस्ट्री टेकिंग एंड वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ इट एंड हाउ टू एनालाइज टू अराइव एट अ प्रोविजनल डायग्नोसिस इन द नेक्स्ट सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू एड्रेस फर्दर डिटेल्स of how to arrive at the anatomy pathology etc and the next episode dr chokane will discuss how to arrive at an anatomical diagnosis not only anatomical but micro anatomical friends i hope you are enjoying this youtube channel and i hope you continue to be with us thank you very much